Hungary uh, for a while. I lived there between 2014 and 2016, and while I was there, um, the refugee crisis was huge. It was a really big deal, um, and I was living in a train. I was living by a train station where like everything was kind of coming to a head, and so I was already doing some humanitarian stuff, and that just really like affected me. And so after living there for like I think it was 19 months, I came back and I just wanted a job that you know I could. I felt like I was giving back to the world a little bit, uh, especially after the things I'd seen, and so. Um, this place popped up actually on the ASU. I was in the MON ASU, and so it popped up on the ASU job search page, and I just jumped on it and loved it. And that was two and a half years ago, and I've loved it ever since. And I, it's my, it was a great decision. First, I mean, it's enriched it for sure. Um, I think that working here has made me appreciate what I have so much. It's, it's helped me to appreciate the community I live in a lot more. I mean, you have to imagine when we have these doors, people are coming in from halfway homes, people are coming in from really well-off businesses. We have people coming in family groups and sport groups and just seeing this community coming together to help people that have nothing is really impactful. And hearing stories of staff who are going to give this food out, community kids coming in, it's just been enriching. I, I definitely am, will always be aware, I guess, of the issues in the world we don't talk about often in the United States. 6,200 kids dying every day because of hunger. That's not a statistic you can forget very easy, and that's not an issue you can forget very easy. distribution partners um, and I've met some of them who have come in who have said hey I'm, I'm living in Africa I, forgot, I think he was from Uganda I forgot exactly he's like I'm looking at trying to partner with you guys and so I met people like that I had a girl come in who served a church mission trip to Nicaragua um, one of the families that she was helping out invited her to dinner and when she came over to their house they had man pack rice and the mom was a from her story um, the only means of income she had was washing clothes in a river for other people and the dad wasn't really part of life and they just really didn't have anything. And so by providing food for them, it wasn't like they were starving to death, but they were able to save what little they had. They were actually able to send their daughter to college because of Deep My Starving Children. One last quick story, we had a gentleman come in from Kenya, I think it was, and he's like, hey, listen, I grew up and I'm alive because it's man of fact rice. I didn't know what it was when I was a kid. All I know is that I was in a situation where I was dying. My family was, we got Deep My Starving Children food, we were alive. When I grew up, I was able to change my life. I moved to Florida. He's like, I heard about you guys, and I realized that that was where my food came from, that you guys were the providers of manna packed rice. And so I flew out here to meet you guys, and that was a really powerful experience for everybody who got to meet him. Again, there's four main ingredients. The first one is vitamins. The second is veggies. The third is soy, and the fourth is rice. We put uh, vitamins in here, obviously, because it's just important that you intake your vitamins every single day. Secondly, we have veggies, and this is dried carrots and potatoes. Um, it's important to have your veggies as well, and it just makes this uh, mana pack rice bag more colorful and fun to eat. And then the third, we have soy. We use uh, soy as a source of protein because a lot of the countries that we send to, they don't eat meat. So we want to be considerate of that, and we just want to be able to send to more countries, so we just use that as our protein. And then lastly, we have rice. Who here has heard of rice? Awesome, already. Our point exactly. So many people have heard of rice. It's a universal grain. It's really easy to cook. It's really easy to cook, and um, it's really yummy. So, those are our four main ingredients. Is there anything that you wish more people knew about this organization? Um, yeah, I really wish people knew more about, like, I love when people ask questions about, like, the what happens next. You know, we give a very, in a nutshell version about what happens here. Like, yeah, this is the issues at the death. But it's like, you know, where does the food go? You know, how does it how does it get from point A to point, you know, Z sometimes? It's not like we're just going right to the Philippines we're shipping there. There's lots of little in between points. So just asking about the process, asking about the organizations we partner with, asking about that. I love that because I think it gives people a more complete picture of what their impact is on the world.
you think that religion is very ingrained in the work that we do? Yes. As a side note, we'll talk about ingrained. When we built this place, we actually had a lot of the staff, and I wasn't here for this, but scriptures, prayers, personal requests to God on the beams and inside the walls, um, just because they wanted it to be that, that ingrained within our organization, that even in the foundation of this building, religion is there. Come volunteer, because <laughs> it is awesome here at Female Starving Children. 